Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, definitely hit that subscribe button. Today, I thought I would do a quick video on a home recording setup that I've been using lately. I've kind of tweaked a few things and I think I've landed on something that allows me to get some great sounds quickly and easily, but also have some flexibility to tweak things after the fact. I'm using a few different digital solutions for this setup as well as some analog ones. So it's kind of a cool, hybrid setup that allows me to get some great sounds. Let's take a look. All right, so here is part of the setup, and I know that initially this probably looks a little confusing, but here's what we got going on. So first I am running from my guitar with this cable right here straight into the Clean DI from Pinstripe Pedals. This is a brand new product from them. It is similar to like a radial J48, just a great clean DEI. Now, um, from that, I'm taking an XLR into Pro Tools, so I'm recording just a, you know, clean DEI signal that can be used for reamping or for a few different uh, purposes that we'll get into here in a second. Out of here, I'm going out of the buffered out, and that goes into my pedal board, and then from the pedal board to an amp. Right now, I'm using a, a smaller board here at home that just stays here. I have a larger board that's been uh, kind of staying out on the road for a lot of festival dates and stuff that I'm doing this summer. From the amp, we go into the two notes captor right here. Um, right now, I've got four different amps that I'm using uh, most of the time, either a Deluxe Reverb, a Tweed Deluxe, a Matchless C30, or my Dumble clone. Depending on what kind of tones I'm trying to get, I'll plug into one of those. And fortunately for me, all of those have 8 ohm outputs of some sort, so I can switch them to that. I also have the Torpedo Captor in 4 ohm, which um, allows me to use two amps at one time and use different amps. So, um, But right now, I'm using the 8. And then out of here, I am taking an XLR into Pro Tools that gives me just the DI'd amp sound, right? So there's no cabinet in that equation. I can use an IR inside Pro Tools to make that sound like normal, but otherwise it sounds really, really bad. Um, also out of the two notes captor, I am coming out of here and then going into the Iridium. Now I have the Iridium set up so that there's no amp modeling, right? I'm already going into an amp. And so I really just wanna use the IR or the impulse response aspect of the Iridium. So I have the amp part turned off and then I will select different IRs from the Iridium um, to uh, get a finished sound, just a complete sound. Again, these first two, you know, they're not quite finished, right? We've got our DI sound and then we have an amp with no cabinet sound. And then this gives me kind of that finished amp and speaker sound. The Iridium is going into the DSO XO, which is similar to the DSO Plus, if you've seen my video on that. It's just a really great solution for modelers um, that gives you great clean signal and just really sounds awesome. Um, it's, it sounds great with anything I've used it with. So you might notice currently I just have the Iridium set up mono. Um, at times I have had that set up stereo, which is why I have the two XLRs here, but um, I'm really only generally recording a mono sound. I could record um, a different IR left and right, but usually I'm just picking between one or the other. So again, to review that signal path, I'm getting a DI sound, I'm getting an amp with no cab sound, and then I'm getting a finished amp and IR sound. Let's take a look at just how flexible this is. All right, so here are our three channels coming in. We've got guitar DI here on the top. We've got our amp. I'm, I'm calling this um, just amp, which is the amp into the Iridium. Um, obviously we have to have the two notes captor there. You can't plug an amp directly into the Iridium. Um, that's not gonna be good for either one of them. Um, but I'm just calling that the amp because it's kind of the finished sound, the finished amp sound. And then I've got the amp DI below that. That is the amp into the two notes captor with no IR, no uh, speaker of any sort. Um, now I will say I have these in this order just because of my inputs, how they're coming into uh, Pro Tools. These are in numerical order, um, even though they're not the order that I, I showed you guys them in and how they're set up on my desk. So on top here, we've got our guitar DI. I've recorded these clips. Let's take a listen to that. Now, obviously that's just a clean guitar. There's not really any reason that I would 
use that by itself. But the interesting thing that I'm doing or that allows me to do is either reamp it, either send it out of my DAW into an amp and record it again with a different tone, or what's even easier um, and that I've really had a lot of fun playing with is Tonex. Now, if you're not familiar with Tonex, it is a software as well as a pedal, um, but you do a lot of it in the software that captures amps. So kind of like a Kemper or something like that where you can um, you record um, these weird sounds through an amp and through a microphone and a cabinet and it um, captures kind of the overall sound of the amp. Now I've done some captures in Tonex and then they also offer a ton of different um, captures through ToneNet, which is um, their online interface. I'm not really going to go into all of that, but um, you could do this with anything. I'm using Tonex. You could use any kind of amp in the box or amp plugin or a reamp. And, and that's the thing that the Guitar DI uh, gives me the flexibility to do is just change the tone afterwards. Uh, so here I've got Tonex here. In Tonex, I have a, uh, a capture of my Dumble clone. It's kind of a light overdrive sound. So here's what that sounds like. So as you can hear, a very different sound, but still a great and usable sound. So if I wanted a different tone with that, or I could even, um, you know, double, um, not double, but, you know, stack those sounds. Now, I will say one thing that you have to watch out for when you're stacking any of these sounds, you're using multiple sounds at a time, is you have to make sure that they're phase aligned. And I'm using this plugin right here called Auto Align that um, I put on every channel and that allows me to phase align them all, um, whether I'm using the amp sound or the amp DI sound with a speaker IR, or I'm using something like Tonex or reamping it. You need to make sure that all of those sounds are in phase. Now, even if they are in phase, they still might not stack super well, especially if you're in mono. I've found uh, it to sound the best or had the most luck with panning one left and right. So maybe I'm using the amp sound panned right and using the uh, DI'd or reamped sound uh, you know, pan the other direction. So here's what that would sound like with the Tonex kind of Dumble style amp on one side and then the Tweed Deluxe on the other. Now, to me, I love how that sounds. It sounds huge, it sounds great, um, and really gives you an interesting stereo field there. So next, I wanna talk about the amp DI sound. Now, by itself, this sounds terrible. I'm not even gonna play it. It sounds um, absolutely awful, but I'm using the Torpedo Wall of Sound plugin to add a speaker IR kind of after the fact to get that finished sound. Now, what this does is it gives me the ability to change that IR after the fact, and this is the way that I've recorded guitars for years and years, is um, basically monitoring through this plugin, finding an IR that I'm happy with, but then um, you know also having the ability to change that after the fact, after the fact of recording the actual actual part and getting the tone. This gives me the flexibility to, you know, change mic position or change the type of speaker once I have a better picture of the entire mix or what's going on with other parts. Right now I have this uh, running through one of my oval IRs. This is a blue with a 57 on it. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, now we can do the same thing that we did with the DI and Tonex sound and the you know amp sound, whereas we can use this with one of those other tones and pan it out or even stack it. Again, the stacking can be a little tricky depending on the IR or everything, uh, but we also, you know, we just wanna make sure that we align those, phase align them to get the best sound. Even with them being phase aligned, they still might not um, you might find that you just get a little weirdness there. So be careful. Don't just assume that you can stack all of these, even if they are phase aligned and it's going to sound better. Um, panning them left and right for me is an easy solution that really gives you a cool stereo field. Let's check that out. So here we will have the amp DI on the right and we will have the finished kind of amp sound on the left. <laughs>
Now you'll notice with that, it sounds more cohesive to me. We're not getting that um, super wide stereo spread that we were getting when, when I was using the Tonex um, DI sound and the amp. Um, I think one reason for that is that it's the same amp, right? We're, we're using the Tweed sound and then we're essentially adding different IRs. One IR is being used uh, from the Iridium and another IR is being used um, in my DAW. You know, I feel like this setup gives me kind of the best of all the worlds, right? I've got a great amp sound. I'm using, you know, tubes. I'm going through the analog hardware, but then I'm getting some flexibility out of the digital side of things. Um, you know, not only when I'm creating the sound using IRs through the Iridium, I'm getting, um, you know, no latency sounds there, but then I'm also being able to tweak it after the fact and get totally different sounds. And maybe I combine those or maybe it's one or the other. Um, Again, so much flexibility, so much, um, uh, so many options that allow me to get great tones quickly and easily, which if you guys know anything about me and my channel, um, I am a big fan of that, right? We want to get to making music more quickly. And I feel like once this setup is set up, you know, once it's here, just sitting on my desk, it's easy to do. Now, granted, there is some, uh, you know, you've got to route everything and you've got to make that all make sense to you and, and figure that out. But, um, you know, at least to me, it all makes fairly, uh, fairly good sense um, once you once you figure it all out um, and gives you tons of great sounds. That's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this content or any other content that you've seen from my channel, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. You guys know how YouTube works. All of those are easy ways to help me out. Also check some links down in the description. I'll link some things that I talked about here in the video, as well as some of my favorite pieces of gear and, um, you know, guitar stuff. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.